Hi, Sam. Tell me a bit about acute pancreatitis and its diagnosis. How, how is that disease process diagnosed? So acute pancreatitis is a, a, a condition where the symptoms are making us think, could this patient have pancreatitis? So first, they want to have the symptoms that are typical of pancreatitis, the higher up in the belly, which we call epigastric pain, with or without the vomiting. So having that, and then you need another criteria to make two out of the three diagnostic criteria. So these other ones we look for are whether the patient have lab elevations of lipase or amylase, and these are the pancreatic enzymes that get elevated in the blood, and they are usually three times the upper limit of normal for that lab and then whether they have imaging findings of pancreatitis on ultrasound or CAT scans. So usually a patient who has two out of these three criteria from the symptoms in lab and imaging does have acute pancreatitis. Tell me about timing of imaging in acute pancreatitis. Is everyone getting imaging? Is it an ultrasound? Is it a CT scan? So that's a great question, and we have found that using an ultrasound, at least for a first attack presentation, could help A, confirm the diagnosis, B, looking for some of the anatomic things that you could find, or even diagnose gallstone pancreatitis in that case, where the child will benefit from a specific therapy to treat that gallstone disease, for instance, by taking their gallbladder out. We don't have imaging in every case of pancreatitis. If the child, for instance, is known to have acute pancreatitis and this is just another attack and we know it's going to be a one to two days, just the usual recovery, we try not to use um, advanced imaging like computed tomography or CT scans or MRI, which are the magnetic resonance imaging in every attack, because these are not usually needed, especially if you have a pancreatitis that is mild and going to resolve on its own, but when the cases get complicated, we sometimes do need to use those kind of more specialized imaging to look for those complications and perhaps intervene when the child needs it. Truly important to recognize that we really don't need imaging on every episode of acute pancreatitis, but really it plays a role to help guide therapy if we're really concerned about a complex course development of complications. I agree, and it definitely makes sense for us as providers to think, which imaging am I getting? And depending on the timing of the presentation also, early in the disease, you start with an ultrasound and you kind of delay the more specialized one through um, the hospitalization until a later date or day if the child doesn't resolve on their own as expected.